It was a visit to Toys R Us in September 1996 that would in an instant turn my disinterest toward the soon-to-be-released Nintendo 64 into hype of the highest magnitude. To my eyes, this was real. I didn't see the pointed polygons, the blurry textures, the flat trees. I was in a world where I could go in any direction, do anything. It was unlike any experience I had ever had before. Too real to be real. How could this power possibly be something that could soon be purchased and brought into my own home? Okay, look, I don't mean to be a party pooper, and I certainly don't know what drugs Triforce was on during the 1990s, but this system was anything, anything but real life to me. I never really liked it, other than maybe Super Mario 64, GoldenEye, maybe Smash Brothers if you're into that sort of simple nonsense, a few games. It really wasn't really redeeming for me, and I just didn't care for this system too much. Nonetheless, people love it, and there are a ton of great mods. One of them, which is brand new, is Pixel FX's N64 Digital. Now this beautiful kit right here will give you HDMI upscaled 1080p output, it will give you RGB analog video as well as analog component, YPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPPP
Okay, now we're just going to lift the main board out. And there it comes, and we're going to gather all of our screws and put them in an area so we don't lose them. Excellent work. Our main board has been liberated from the bottom shell. Let's go ahead and take the bottom RF shield off and discard it for now. And the objective now is to remove the top RF plate and heat sink so that we have full exposure to all of the areas that we need to directly solder to and work with. Let's remove this right now. Now I have seen a lot of people on YouTube thinking that they must remove all of these screws in order to remove this entire assembly from this main board. You don't have to do that. There are only two screws that you are required to remove and they're these two screws right here and they have little lock washers underneath them. So simply take your Phillips screwdriver, zip them out, and once you zip them out, I'll show you how to carefully and very delicately remove this assembly from the main board safely without damaging anything. Let's get it going. Okay, we'll take our two screws and put them over here. Now this is where things start getting a little crazy and this is where you have to start paying attention to your bodies and to my instruction. When you remove this assembly, I recommend that you hold the board flat up just like this with the power port facing north or up to the heavens of Lord Jesus and take your finger, your index finger, plant it on the top of the power port and grab the heat sink with your middle finger and your thumb just like this plant down here and start very carefully only separating in this corner just like this one two three nice and easy just like that only this corner when you have this corner worked off come down here to the player one port and just simply rotate your thumb out just like this just like this watch just like that and you have totally liberated the heat shield and the heat sinks from the main board. We're ready to get started and we're ready to get down to the real job. Let's do it. Now I believe we should just go ahead and tackle the most difficult procedure of installing this kit into the N64. Now this is the RCP. This is a processor on the N64. This is the flex cable that PixelFX provides with the kit and it's absolutely necessary that we install this to this processor so that the kit will work properly. Now this is a quad flat pack surface mount chip, fine pitch here on the pins. It can be difficult and I have already seen so many videos out there showing the most poor technique imaginable of getting this doggone flex cable installed here. Guys, I, I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but I want you guys to have the best shot possible of getting this right. This isn't cheap, and these are no longer cheap. So let's teach good technique, clean technique, safe technique. Now we're going to zoom in, we're going to do that, and I'm also going to talk about scenarios you may find yourself in. Soldering traps, solder bridges you may create. I'm going to show you some easy way outs and how you can really work with this system and you can really find yourself a champion the cards are stacked against you. Let's zoom in, let's talk about it, let's see if we can't help you guys get this installed the right way. Let's do it. Now we've zoomed in nice and tight to the RCP and we'll be aligning our flex cable to pin 6 right here on this chip. Now we're going to go over a bunch of different things and a bunch of different techniques but for starters let's go ahead and let's just start with the simple procedure of aligning this getting it bodged into place and we'll go over what I consider to be the finish work of soldering it. Then we'll also create a bridge so we can absolutely replicate what some of you are absolutely going to find. When you put too much on here, when you blob up your solder, when you're not wetting your joints well, let's go through it. To begin, before we do anything, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to rotate this tip so that the belly is facing upwards. Belly's facing upwards. I'm going to apply just a very small bead amount of solder, just like this. Watch very carefully. That's all it takes. That's all I'm going to apply. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to grab some flux and I'm just going to work over this side. Now according to Pixel FX's instructions, this flex cable is to be aligned with pin 6 of the RCP. Now you can see the number 1 here and you can see these little tiny dots. These are reference designators. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. The pin next to the dot to the right of it is pin six. So let's get in there. Let's just line this up 
visually with our eyeballs. Now this is not a big deal and people freak out over this too. It's nothing. I'm going to take both fingers. I'm going to take my index finger and my thumb, which you really can't see, and I'm just going to line this up. It's very quick. And you can visualize the entire assembly from one end of the flex cable all the way to the other. You don't have to worry about only soldering the outsides. As long as you can visualize in its entirety the entire run of your solder, where, where you're going to be soldering, and you can see all the pitch alignment, there's nothing here to do. There's nothing to worry about. Having said that, that's in perfect alignment. I'm now going to take my tip. We've already fluxed it up. We already have just a little bit of solder on there. And I'm just going to make a nice small drag, just like this. Watch carefully. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to go across these pins. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm going to let it go. Perfect. We have a nice little tacky bodge right there. It's in place. I no longer have to hold this. And that already looks pretty darn good. If you want, you can make a second pass or even a third pass. But let's do something different. Let's create an intentional solder bridge. Now, that's a pretty healthy bridge. How can we remove this? Well, we have a couple of options here and a couple of different techniques that we can employ. The first, clean your tip very thoroughly. Then apply a generous amount of no clean flux. Now apply the tip and try to rake the solder and distribute it across all of the pins. Now you're going to make this bridge smaller and smaller. So the trick is make it smaller, clean your tip, and repeat. Now notice we still have this little bridge right here, but watch, all I'm going to do is clean my tip so that it's perfectly clean. We're not even going to apply any more flux. Watch this. Just like that. That's one way of handling a bridge. Let's create another bridge here on the right side. Now here's an old technique that I used to teach people all the time. Let's say that you have a bridge and you can't clear it with your iron, but you don't have any solder wick. Well, how can you do that? How can you cure this? Now I'm going to take some ribbon wire because I don't have any solder to wicker. I'm going to cut and strip maybe four to six conductors. I'm going to slowly remove the sheathing just like this. And I'm going to be very careful because at this point I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate and I'm going to rotate. And I want to rotate. And I'm going to do a little twist at the end, just like that. That's all I need. Now I'm going to take some of that jelly flux. I'm just going to dab it in there, just like that. Now we have a makeshift wick that will perform better than any goot wick or any desoldering braid you could buy for less than 10 cents. We'll take our tip, and we'll zoom back in, and I'll show you this in action. Now right here is our bridge. We're going to bring our wick right into position. We're going to take our soldering tip. Watch this. Count to five. Apply. Count one, two, three, four, and five. Release. Just like that. A couple of tricks you can use and employ if you find yourself in a hot spot. Now we're all finished with this specific flex cable. And I'm sorry guys if that shot was a little bloomed out. I looked at the footage and it looked okay, but it looked like it might have been a little bloomy in some spaces. But always inspect your work. Make sure you have nice, clean, beautiful fillets, which we do here. I think this shot may look a little bit better than our actual soldering. Sorry about that. Nonetheless, that's that. Now we are almost finished with this flex cable. Let's move on down the line here, and you'll notice we have a few solder pads here that we have to manually solder to. Now I really don't like this. I wish that there was a secondary flex cable that came over here to the PIF, which is the chip we have to solder these to, but ultimately we have to break these out manually. 
Now there's just a few here that we have to do, and also this JP1, this jumper is for the clock mod, and this is typically used for PAL systems, so that the N64 Digital can generate the clock signal, so that you can alternate between PAL and NTSC frequencies. We don't care about that, so we're going to leave it alone. We're going to go ahead and solder these to this. Now on this particular main board, this little via right here can be a little tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill this via up with some solder just like this. Perfect. And I'm going to take a pretend 30 yaw conductor, the same stuff I've been working with. I want to flex this up one more time. Fantastic. All three of our conductors are installed on the Nintendo 64. Now let's just route them right to our flex cable right here on our designated pads. Let's do it. Great work guys, we're almost done. That's our three conductors. There's just one little bit left on this flex cable. It's right here. Let's get to it. Now the part that we're going to be soldering to is a surface mount 7805 voltage regulator. On the far left, this pin is the 12 volt input. On the far right, this is the 5 volt DC rail. And this is exactly what we'll be soldering to. Let's do it. Now we're going to take our flex cable, see this indignation right here? We're not going to crease it, we're just going to gently roll it over. And while we roll it over, we'll grab our little pigtail right here, and we'll just put this in position to grab our 5 volt output so that we have a 5 volt rail on this flex cable. Let's zoom in and let's just bodge this bad boy right into place. Doesn't get any cleaner than that. Now we're going to flip our N64 mainboard over so we're looking at the bottom because we have a flex cable that installs right here to the multi-out pins in order to get analog RGB as well as YPB PB, retro RGB sex, R video out analog style. Let's solder that in carefully. And of course when you're soldering this in, make sure your FFC cable is oriented in the correct way. And boom goes the dynamite. Now the last order of business here is to install this little piece of foam that Pixel FX includes and it lives right over the multi-amp pins. Just like that. Okay, let's move on. Now it's at this point, ladies and gentlemen, where I would say that all the soldering is done. Now naturally, once again, make sure you inspect all of your soldering to make sure you have no shorts, no bridging, and that everything is in sound and in good order. We're ready to put this together. Now we'll be using the 3D printed components that I talked about earlier. Let's bring the shell back into play and let's get that situated. Now, when putting our 3D printed part together, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this little metal tab right here. Now right here, I have the base that's for the 3D printed part by Laser Bear Industries. And this fits in just like so. Perfect. Now with all of our mod work finished and our kit ready to go, 
I like to do the next step maybe a little bit differently than some people, so pay close attention. I'm actually going to go ahead and connect our FFC cables directly to our kit before ever putting it in to the bottom shell of the N64. I'm going to do that right now. Pay attention. Do it with me. Now I'm very carefully going to just move this over to the side and I'm going to bring our actual shell into place and I'm going to remove this little metal tab for just a moment because we need to insert the 3D printed base that the N64 digital PCB will actually sit on. So here's the base and it goes in just like so very very easily. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up our kit and I'm just very carefully going to sort of put this in position just like so no tension no stress it literally just falls right into place just like that now I'm going to be sure not to forget our metal tab just like that perfect okay now I'm going to just very carefully position this down like so take your time nice and easy just like that. Perfect. Now everything's oriented properly and just fine. This is the part where I put in the 3D printed part in the back so we have a nice clean finished look for the HDMI port. Now it's at this point that I would highly implore you to test this system before buttoning everything else up and finishing this project. Now only do it for 10 to maybe 15 seconds because we don't have a heat sink on these chips, they get toasty pretty quick. Now this unit tested perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and apply our heat shield and RF unit back onto the top so we have heat sinks on here. Let's button it up and let's give it just a little bit of a testing. Now we have Glover loaded up here because I find that Glover has some of the nicest colors and uses the palette of the N64 really nicely. Now quite frankly, the N64 Digital outputs gorgeous digital video via HDMI and it has various scaling options, it has various filtering options. Um, we'll get into that just a little bit uh, when we get into the game. I'm not going to go really in depth into detail because that's really not what my content is about. But I'm just talking about the kit and how it looks. So far. I've been playing with this for about a day. It's quite impressive. But you have to ask yourself, how much do you really care for the Nintendo 64? I particularly don't. And quite frankly, I, there's only so much you can do to make these graphics look less crappy than they already do. All of this upscaling and filtering, in my opinion, doesn't do much. Now there are some useful things, and we're going to drop into the menu right here. We're going to go into the post-processing, and I hope that um, YouTube's compression is very forgiving on this, but if we turn off the de blur, you can clearly see a difference in the picture detail and the quality of the sharp pixel edges. Now we're going to turn this off, pay attention to some of the text. Now very clearly there's a stark contrast in quality there, but other than that, I mean really, it's just not that big of a deal to me. I think it's great if this is what you're into. If you love the N64, there is no better kit to buy. If you are a huge Nintendo 64 fan, you're not going to find any better hardware anywhere else. But for the rest of us, an S-Video modded N64 with an external processor such as the RetroTINK, perfectly reasonable for me, and quite frankly, I think it looks just as acceptable to my eyes. But again, we're all different, and that's wonderful because everybody has a different opinion, and otherwise this would be an incredibly, incredibly boring community. So if you're looking for a digital video solution, clearly I think the N64 Digital is the way to go. Not only do I not recommend the Ultra HDMI, I highly discourage it these days because quite frankly, you can't treat people the way that guy treats people in terms of no communication, absolutely crapping on the install base, and that ridiculous schmups dumpster fire of a disaster thread for a pre-buy 
that lasted for, I think, even a couple of years. No good. Like I said earlier, guys, if you're a big fan of the Nintendo 64, this is a great kit. You're not going to find any better hardware anywhere else. Quite frankly, it's just not the system for me. Now, somebody like Triforce or Mark Diddleson of My Life in Gaming, they're going to love this hardware because they have a deep connection to that system and they care about getting every ounce of high fidelity video out. Either way, you're a winner regardless. So I hope this video was helpful. And as always, I offer these services to people who can't do mods on their own. I love teaching this stuff, but at the same time, I realize there are people out there who just can't solder. If you're interested in me installing this kit or any other kit, please go to my website. I'm going to link it down below. I'll help you. I'll help anybody who needs help that's in the United States. Having said that, if you haven't already, give it a consideration. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. I know I've been gone for a year, but I intend to make some content and I really want to make things so you guys can learn and you can empower yourselves. That way maybe you don't have to spend a bunch of money to have somebody else do these mods for you. As always, be very careful about the videos you watch and the stores who offer these services and this content. Because more often than not, unfortunately, it's been my experience as well as others, you're not getting what you're paying for and the quality of this is just often very lackluster. So vet these people out. Take it easy guys. Have a wonderful 4th of July. If we're before or after then, I hope your holiday was great. Take it easy. God bless you and your families. Strap on always. Catch you later.